So we manufacture a computer chip on a silicon wafer like this one. Uh, so we start with a dinner plate sized piece of um, silicon, normally about a millimeter thick. And then what we want to do is build up our electronic circuit on top of this piece of silicon. Um, and we do that using a process called photolithography. Uh, so this repeatedly masks areas of the chip um, and then we diffuse different chemicals into the silicon to change its electronic properties. Um, this enables us to build up a layer of transistors and then we repeat this process uh, for the many layers of interconnect we need to connect all these transistors together. The transistor is the basic component that we build computers out of. Um, in actual fact, that we, we can build uh, all the circuits we need with just two types of transistor. And a transistor itself, you can imagine uh, a pipe with a tap in the middle. And by applying the, vo the, the correct voltage to the tap, we're able to switch it on and off um, and either allow current to flow between the source and drain or not. Uh, so it's really just an electrically controlled switch. So once we have transistors, we can group those transistors together to build um, a single bit of memory or simple logic gates, for example, an AND gate. Um, so the AND gate waits until both its inputs are high before it asserts its output. Um, we can then take these one-bit memories and simple logic gates and build more complex memories and more complex uh, components that are able to do useful computation. Um, and then we're really only one step away from building an actual computer. Uh, and the computer itself is reasonably simple. All it does is read instructions from memory, perform some very simple computation, perhaps access memory, and then moves on to the next instruction. The clever bit is making this happen very, very fast. So in the past, because of the, the number of transistors that we can fit on a chip was very limited, we often had to uh, manufacture many different types of chips for different purposes. So there'd be chips that would be designed that would just be memories and chips that would just do computation and perhaps chips for I.O. Um, but one of the things that uh, transistor scaling and the ability to put more transistors on a, on a single die has given us is the ability to integrate the complete system onto a single chip. And this is why you're able to have a complete computer in a, in a phone. So we can illustrate how quickly uh, transistor sizes, dimensions have shrunk uh, by looking at a very early processor. Um, so I guess this is a, our local success story, ARM. So this is a, a chip plot of one of their early microprocessors from about 1985. So here we have an actual um, chip, uh, which is uh, illustrated in this chip plot. Um, so in 1985, this chip um, required a piece of silicon seven millimeters on each side. And if we wanted to manufacture something similar in a modern process, it would actually, we'd actually be able to manufacture it uh, with the dimensions of 70 microns on each side. And it would actually fit inside one of these pads of the original processor. So, that's a factor of 10,000 in uh, reduction in area, which is an incredible amount of scaling over a reasonably short amount of time. So there's really two limitations. Um, there's, we can build faster and faster computers uh, by exploiting smaller transistors and by using more and more transistors in their design. Um, that enables us to, to build faster processors. Um, there's limitations on how complex we can make a single processor. And the limitation there is really power consumption um, and also communication costs. These wires used to communicate, um, f to connect, interconnect transistors uh, begin to become relatively more expensive as we try and interconnect more transistors. So in the long run, another limitation is if we try and build transistors with incredibly small dimensions, measured perhaps in tens of atoms, then any small variation in uh, how we put that transistor together can have a very big impact on its performance. And we actually get to a point where we can't guarantee when we manufacture the transistor that it will actually work or it will continue to work during the lifetime of the device. Um, and so we have to use different techniques to be able to build computers that are reliable but that can withstand um, the, the, the failure of many transistors throughout the lifetime of the product.